this presentation takes you through specific elements of the dynamics involved in a game of snooker. One may have always been amazed by the way a snooker player is capable of manipulating balls on a snooker table, popping balls after balls and positioning them in line for the next shot. Whilst it is intuitive to them, we can explore this mathematically. Auto cushion collision. Collision between balls. Friction between the ball and the table surface. Spin transfer between balls, which is a very complicated matter. To look at ball collisions, we need to first introduce the coefficient of restitution. This is a value given the letter E, E for elasticity. It's similar to the coefficient of friction where it is a numerical value between 0 and 1 inclusive. We can calculate this mathematically. It's a fraction which is the separation speed divided by the approach speed. One way of looking at it is a measure of how much kinetic energy is transferred when two materials collide. So for example, a perfectly elastic collision is where no kinetic energy is transferred into alternative form and would have an E value of 1. On the other hand, an inelastic collision where all the kinetic energy is transferred to alternative forms such as heat or sound would have an E value of 0. An example of this would be throwing a piece of clay onto the floor. The clay would stick to the floor and not bounce back or move. That means all its kinetic energy has been transferred into other means. Now let's look at a straight on ball collision with the cushion. If the ball approaches the cushion straight on with a speed of u meters per second, then according to our coefficient of restitution equation, the rebound velocity v would be e times u meters per second. But what about for a collision which is at an angle to the cushion? The ball velocity can be separated into components. The u sine theta component is perpendicular to the cushion and the u cos theta is parallel to the cushion. In this case, only the perpendicular component is affected by our E value. So upon rebounding, the ball will have E u sine theta away from the cushion, but still have its existing u cos theta component as it is parallel to the cushion. As the E value between ball and cushion is below 1, our rebound angle phi will always be less than our initial angle theta. If we look at the diagram geometrically, tan phi is equal to E u sine theta divided by u cos theta. As we can see, the u cancels out. This means that our rebound angle is totally independent of our initial velocity. Now, we can look at momentum and collision. Momentum describes any object that is moving, and mathematically, this is a product of its mass and velocity. One way of looking at it is that it is a measure of unstoppability. Any object with high momentum is much harder to stop than an object with low momentum. In all cases, momentum is conserved providing that no external forces act. Let's have a look at the straight on collision between ball and ball. We have a white cube ball which has an initial velocity of u meters per second heading straight on towards a stationary object ball. The E value between the balls is 0.96, but for simplicity we will round up. Also, we will assume that there is no spin whatsoever just before the impact. We will all agree that when the cue ball hits the object ball, the object ball will leave in the same direction as which the cue ball travelled in. 
However, if we use the conservation of momentum and the coefficient of restitution, we can obtain two simultaneous equations to solve the velocities after the impact. This is what happens. The object ball left whilst the cue ball remains stationary. Therefore, by conservation of momentum, this means that the object ball left with the same velocity as which the cue ball originally had. And obviously, the cue ball had zero meters per second. Therefore, all the momentum was transferred from the cue ball to the object ball. What happens in a collision that is at an angle? First of all, look at the diagram. The ghost ball indicates where the cue ball would be just before the collision, in order for the object ball to head off in the same direction as indicated by the longer arrow. We can separate the cue ball velocity into two components. The cosine component and the sine component. In this case, the cosine component is the straight on component. As established previously, in a straight on collision, all the momentum is transferred to the object ball from the cue ball. So in this case, the object ball would gain all the cosine momentum and the cue ball itself would still have the sine component. So when the cue ball hits the object ball at an angle, the object ball leaves with the cosine velocity, whilst the cue ball leaves with the sine velocity. The cue ball will always leave at right angles to the object ball, as shown by this diagram. We can see that in all the cases, providing that there's no spin, the cue ball will always leave tangentially to the object ball. Clearly, collisions on a snooker table is not as simple as this. So let's have a look at an animation which looks at a collision involving spin in slow motion and in detail. The cue ball which has spin collides with a stationary object ball. As the ball's collision is through the centres, no spin or angular momentum is transferred. Therefore, the original moving ball maintains its spin only transferring its linear momentum. Now at the time of the collision, the spinning ball was in the process of spinning over the stationary ball. So as the object ball left just after the collision, the spinning ball continues to spin in mid-air. Gravity eventually causes the ball to drop back onto the table's surface. Due to the friction and the ball spin, this causes the ball to roll along the table. In this case, forwards due to its top spin. Now, when the collision is at an angle, just after impact, the ball not only has its sine component of velocity, but there is an additional velocity that develops due to the spinning kinetic energy being transferred into linear motion whilst the ball is on the table. Just like projectiles, this constant acceleration creates a parabolic path which the cue ball follows as shown by the diagram. So as the ball loses spin, its velocity increases in the direction of the spin. The left diagram shows forward spin and the right hand side diagram shows back spin.